And it was like, uh, what about, you know, it's, it's like the gauntlet. We have to run the gauntlet before we can get to the mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. Yes, please. Or an eight and a six, whatever, however we run with questions that we've got. Okay. Okay. Welcome to Good Morning Central Oregon. I am so thrilled to be sitting here with a very familiar face. It seems like I grew up with him in reruns. This well, is Jerry you. Mathers, who a lot of us know as Beaver Cleaver from Leave It to Beaver. Thank you for joining me this morning. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I, I am thrilled. I obviously saw you in reruns, but I know when I told my dad that you were coming on the show, he was so excited until he asked me to tell you, thank you for being such a good role model. When you started that show, did you think you were going to be a role model? Oh, very definitely not. I mean, Leave it to Beaver started in 1957, mm -hmm. and right now, uh, on and off, of course, because it doesn't show all the time, but it shows in 180 countries in 160 different languages. So not only does it show in this country, but it shows all over the world. Mm -hmm. But no, I had or did any of the cast or any of the people that wrote it or had anything to do with it ever thought that it would be on more than any show that you're watching right now or any other show that I'd uh, ever been in. Right. I mean, before, I, I started as an actor when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. And so before I even did Leave it to Beaver, um, I've worked with, I'd worked with Alfred Hitchcock. I did two movies with Bob Hope. I'd worked with Alan Ladd, um, James Cagney, um, Frank Sinatra. Um, Walter Pigeon. So I had done a whole lot of movie and a whole lot of television work before I ever started Leave it to Beaver. Mm -hmm. But because of the phenomena of television and its just mass appeal, um, it definitely uh, just completely obliterated my, um, my movie career and people now know me as the Beaver. But you know what? It's something I'm very, very proud of. I, I, I don't say that in any way to um, disparage the, the other things I've done, but mm -hmm. it's something I'm very proud of. It's a great show. Every show on Leave it to Beaver is almost like um, a medieval morality play. I mean, yeah. um, you watch each show, the, the beaver is presented with some sort of um, a moral dilemma. He has to make certain um, uh, decisions, and those decisions then affect him. He has, of course, usually his arch nemesis, Eddie Haskell, sure. and he comes in <laughs> and says, you know, oh, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. And I think everyone knows the characters in Leave it to Beaver. That's what makes it so special. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Haskell, for people that don't know, is, is kind of the person that everyone knows. He'll come up to you and smile in your face and tell you everything's fine. And the minute you turn your back, he sticks that knife right between your shoulder blades mm -hmm. and talks behind your back. <laughs> but everybody knows all the characters. Um, everyone would love to have um, a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. that basically um, kept the house clean and cooked all three meals. But, you know, in today's society, a lot of those things aren't possible. Right. Uh, probably the biggest criticism of Leave it to Beaver is people say, well, you know, it's not like that. But Leave it to Beaver is not really a documentary of the 50s. It's situation comedy. We all wish that you know life could be like that mm -hmm. but even in the 50s there were dysfunctional families and now there are dysfunctional families leave it to beaver is a situation comedy about that time so it's really not a documentary of the 50s right so for those of us who weren't there it's not it know. really wasn't that way i know a lot of people say but you know it really wasn't like that in the 50s and mm -hmm. i say i absolutely would agree with you right. it, it's situation comedy we were trying to you know have a nice little show that people could sit down and watch and you know laugh at the trouble that the beaver and wally got into and <laughs> and how june and ward you know would ultimately solve it i know i would have loved it my dad was um the principal when i was doing leave it to beaver of the largest high school in the uh, la unified school district and i got in trouble um you know not any more than most kids but i did get in trouble i was always wishing that my father when i got in trouble would take me into the library like ward used to do to the beaver <laughs> and just have a nice talk and say that I had to stay in my room for the next three days because mm -hmm. that's not how my father disciplined me. Right, right, or, or most of us for that <laughs> matter. I find it so ironic when I was little and I remembered this as, as I found out I was going to interview you, I had made a prank phone call mm -hmm. when I was small and that day Beaver Cleaver just happened to have made a prank phone call on the show and my mom said, look, 
you know, look what happened to Beaver Cleaver. And I found it so ironic that it really was, it's a morality thing in each but show. I'll, I'll tell you something else that's very interesting about the um, original Leave it to Beaver and also the new Leave it to Beaver. All the shows are from real life. And you might say, well, he just said that, that you know, they weren't. Well, when I say that, all of the things that happen on the show mm -hmm. actually did happen to some person. They aren't just things. Nowadays, um, I'm still involved in television. I work all the time as an actor. I work in movies and I work in television. But nowadays what you have is you have writers go in and they make things up. Right. Well, we made things up on Leave it to Beaver, but they were all based in fact. The writers would actually go in and say, you know what, this happened to me when I was a kid, or my kids did this. Now, they took many, many things that happened to their kids, conglomerations of things that happened to them, mm -hmm. but if you look at each story, they're actually based on fact, things that did happen to real kids, and things that happened, some of these writers were in their 40s and 50s when they were writing the show, so some things that actually happened in the 20s, 30s, 40s are still carrying over because I told you it still plays in 180 countries and all those languages. So there, there are universal principles that happen to all kids all over the world. Right. In all generations. In all generations. Obviously. So has it ever been, a, has there ever been a time when it wasn't too much fun to be Beaver Cleaver? No. You know, it's something I'm very, very proud of. Um, it, 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 it was, it's always been a good thing for mm -hmm. me. I can go all over the world. I always have friends. You know, I, I walk down any street anywhere and people will come up to me and they're always very, very nice. They say hi and, you know, I say hi back to them. And I, I don't even realize that people don't do that to other people, but right. it's because people always recognize me. So it's something I'll have with me all my life. I've met so many very, very special people that otherwise they probably would have just passed me by because in, in some ways that's the way our society is. But people, because pretty much I grew up in everybody's living room, have a right. special bond with me. And it's something that... Uh, you know, I probably don't appreciate it as much as I should, but it's something that I've learned to enjoy very, very much. We are going to be right back talking more about Jerry and his life after the beaver when we return. That was Isn't he great? Uh, Gilbert got an attitude, though, didn't he? And, well, he works actually for um, PBS. He just sounded, I read something, he just sounded almost apologetic that he was involved, and that just kind of bugs me. Well, what he does is he, he is, um, his leanings are extremely um, liberal. So he does PBS um, things in San Francisco, and he doesn't want to be known as an actor. He wants to be known, and he's, in, uh, well, yeah, you would know, you know what Peabody Awards are. Right. He's won like four or five Peabody Awards for documentaries. And his documentaries are really, um, from what I've heard, not the ones that win the Peabody. Those were against um, like the anti-war uh, anti demonstrations. Right. But some of his other films are very, very far left films, which that's his right to make them. Right. But he doesn't want to be known as somebody on Leave it to Beaver because that's more down-home centralist. He wants to be known as a radical. And so that when people ask him anything about Leave it to Beaver, he just doesn't want to talk about it because that doesn't fit into his agenda. His agenda is to be a radical left producer. And, you know, that's his business. I think that's fine, but it's, I think he could find a better way you know, they just say, well, I was in it, but I don't believe in it. What a body of work. How many episodes? Uh, 234. I mean, what a body of work. It's, it's something to be so proud of. But I'll tell you, that we had, I mean, when did it become politically correct to not be a, a housewife? Was that in the 70s? Um, yeah. But you know what the funny part is? I'll, I'll just add, now you guys are both, and I'll, this is aimed at both of you. Um, when um, TV Land, and they're the ones that run Leave it to Beaver now, bought Leave it to Beaver, they spent a um, million dollars to do one of their you know, studies to find out what demographic group and when they should run Leave it to Beaver. What do you think the number one demographic group is for Leave it to Beaver? And I'll tell you right now, I got it wrong. You know, the only one I'm going to say is 10 and under, okay. because my nephew and niece 
watch it every day. Okay. I'm, I could be wrong. What do you Females think? Females 18 to 34. You're absolutely right. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and the, that's what blew me away. I would have that's never. That's me. Yeah. yeah. And, I, yeah. and you know when TV ran, land runs it, and it's, to me, it, it's kind of disheartening because we lose all, lose all the kids. They run it at, on, in New York at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. in the Midwest at 9, on Pacific Time at 8, and on the West Coast at 7, because, and it's not geared towards kids. Their number one audience, but this is what made me think That's of it, cool. is women 18 to 35. The reason, though, is that all the women that are now pretty much like yourself working long to be housewives yeah. like June Cleaver and wish they could be there with not particularly the two boys, you know, they want maybe more of an atomic family, but they wish that they could um, uh, basically be there at home and not have to work. I mean, it's like the idealized family and that's why they love Leave it to Beaver. That's right. That's but right. I, I, guessed, I guessed men. I said probably men 10 to like 21, you know, in that, that age range. But mm -hmm. I would have never guessed women 18 to 35. You're one of the first people, I'll oh tell you, that, yeah, that got that right. Maybe you read the study. No, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> when we come back, I want to ask you about life. Okay. After. Your life did not stop when, nope. when the show ended. I, I have no secrets. So anything you want to ask, be my guest. Yay. We're ready, Gary. Mm hmm Welcome back to Good Morning Central Oregon. I'm back with Jerry Mathers, also known as Beaver Cleaver, for six years on the hit sitcom Leave It to Beaver. And of course, generations of us know you as Beaver Cleaver. Now, when the show ended, obviously your life didn't end. What did you do? Well, you know, I was very, very lucky. Um, a lot of the other child stars ran into massive problems. And one of the reasons um, was is that they were pretty much the sole providers for their family. Um, my father was fully employed. He was a, a vice principal and then principal of a high school. He went on, he retired as an LA um, uh, area superintendent. Mm -hmm. But so he was fully employed. It didn't really matter. I mean, I went to the studio every day and I worked, but it was because I wanted to be there. I used to beg my parents to go on interviews before I got Leave It to Beaver, and I was very happy working there. So when Leave It to Beaver was getting ready to end after six years, studio came to my parents and they said, um, would, we would like to put Jerry under another long-term contract. We'd like to go back and start his movie career again, because mm -hmm. I told you I'd done very many movies. Right. We'd also like to do another series, and we'd like to continue this. And so my parents came to me and they said, do you want to do this? Now, the one thing that I really missed, because when I was working at the studio, I had a private tutor. So mm -hmm. I didn't go to school with any other kids. I had one-on-one -on -one with a private tutor. Tony Dow was in high school, so he had a separate tutor. Now, it was an excellent education but I wanted to go to regular school and it would, was going to be my freshman year in high school so mm -hmm. I told my parents no I want to go to regular school my parents went to the studio and said uh, no thank you he wants to go to regular school uh, I also wanted to play sports that was the other thing mm -hmm. so my parents said no the studio was very shocked and but they my dad said that's it so I went the next four years to um, regular high school. I was on the swimming team, the football team, the track team. Did all the things just like any other regular high school person. I did kind of in some ways keep my, um, well I guess name in some ways in the uh, entertainment field. I started a band called Beaver and the Trappers and I was known in high school as the Beaver mm -hmm. but it was because we used to play all the proms and sock hops and the band was called Beaver and the Trappers so people didn't know me from the TV TV show they knew me from the band. Mm -hmm. I graduated from high school in 1967 so I basically could either um, go to Canada, uh, be drafted. I enlisted in the Air National Guard and I spent um, six years in the California Air National Guard mm -hmm. and then I went on um, to Berkeley. I took actually the money that I had made from Leave it to Beaver which um, my dad and mom had invested for me and put myself through Berkeley. I have a degree in philosophy from um, the University of California at Berkeley and um, while I was at Berkeley I was investing the money to be able to put myself through school and just when I was ready to graduate um, the bank that I was doing that with said if you want we'll put you in our management training program. 
So I said, okay, and I became uh, a vice president of the bank. I spent about four years as a banker, and then I went into real estate. And then Tony Dow, who had been working as an actor, and he was Wally on Leave it to Beaver, the entire time since Leave it to Beaver had ended, asked me if I would like to do a stage play with him for six weeks. And I said, okay. And the next thing I knew, I was doing a stage play with him that we were doing standing room only business oh, wow. all over the country. And we spent 18 months doing a standing room only play that had nothing to do with Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> and it was so popular that the people in New York and Hollywood said, gee, if these two guys are that popular doing a play that has nothing to do with Leave it to Beaver, why don't we do a remake? So we did um, a movie called Still the Beaver in 1982. It was the number four movie of 1982, the movie of the week. Then we went on to do a new series called The New Leave it to Beaver, which went on from 1983 to 1989. There are 103 episodes of that. And after that, um, I've been working very, very hard, so I took some time off. And now I've gone back into acting, and I work full-time as an actor. Right. And you have a family. Uh, actually, I'm divorced. Um, I have a son that's uh, 23, I have a daughter that's 18, and I have a daughter that's 14 now. So, right. um, but I'm back into bachelor life, and that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting after um, being married for many, many years. And it would be. And you also wrote a book. You're an author now. Well, when I was, when I was turning 50, I kind of looked back. Actually, when I was about 48, I started thinking to myself, you know, um, this is a half century, and um, I've had a very, very interesting life. Mm -hmm. I've met people, and as I say, most people, just because of the mass media appeal of Leave it to Beaver, tend to focus on Leave it to Beaver. But I've met um, the Alfred Hitchcock movie I did, The Trouble with Harry, was like Shirley MacLaine's first movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Hope saved my life in a movie, I, it literally saved my life in a movie that I did with him. So I thought, gee, all these interesting experiences I've had before and then after Leave it to Beaver. So when I was about 48, I started jotting them down. And then about two years ago, um, when I turned 50, I brought out uh, a book, and it's called And Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. And it relates my life before Leave it to Beaver and after Leave it to Beaver. I have to ask you, what are you doing here in Central Oregon? Well, I'm here for the gala at the River House, and it's a fundraiser for the senior centers. And um, they're building a new senior center here. and. The Bend tur Tourism Industry has, um, for the last nine years, been raising money. And for the last two years, they've been giving it to the new senior center that's going to be um, groundbreaking, I guess, in about three months. Right. And it's a wonderful event. All the money stays here. It's being funneled back in. Everyone is donating all of their good works. We're having tonight, I'm going to be the, um, the speaker at the dinner. They have a silent auction with about 80 um, different things that are going to be auctioned off. So we're just and have a real good time. And let me tell you, Central Oregon is thrilled to have you. I am so happy to be here. The people are so nice and it's such a beautiful place. And this is actually an area where people still say hi on the they street. They do. Very, def <laughs> very definitely. Very definitely. Thank you so much. It's My been so pleasure. nice to talk with nice you. Nice talking with you. Jerry Mathers, we are going to now take a look at your forecast. Oh, you rock. That oh, thank great. you. You know, I was going to ask you why, as a child star, that was another thing somebody wanted me to ask, was why you never got caught up in the sex, drugs, and rock and roll of, Well, as I said, you know. I went to Berkeley, so, but. <laughs> we have a guest cooking for our ah, guest. Thank you. The trouble was, when I was at Berkeley, I didn't realize how tough a oh, school it was going to be. Because mm -hmm. Berkeley is a grad school, so when you're in a class with 20 students, 15 of them are either studying for their masters or their doctorates. They don't oh, get wow. A's. They're out of the program. Mm -hmm. So I was up there, and all these other people are partying. And just to stay in school, I had to study. And mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and you were down there in the thing. '60s Revolution. Well, times. actually, it was a little bit later. They, um, the helicopters came over one time and gassed the whole school, and I was there in '69. And then they kind of stopped that. But yeah, the weathermen were still there, and I was there when uh, Patty Hearst was. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a frat rat, and I had two policemen in my dorm, so they think that's one of the reasons the weathermen did not come and get me. Oh my goodness. But, you know, I gotta oh. tell you, my wife uh, went to school. It wasn't weatherman, SLA. Oh, okay. Oh, with the Patty Hearst, yeah. In Billings, Montana, in, in college, and she watched that show with Johnny Carson when, who was it, Shirley 
Um, who was it saying you were killed in Vietnam? Yeah, um, it actually was in all the papers. Oh, my wife I remember Paul, that. Tony Dow actually sent flowers to my mom. Because I was in the service. I mean, I was in the Air Force. And what they told me was that um, probably someone with the same name, I, I gave out an Emmy to Gene Kelly in 1967. And I gave out an Emmy to Gene Kelly. And she probably um, saw um, it in the paper, was going on The Tonight Show that night, was very anti-war. She said, you know, we're losing the flower of American youth and then saying, bring the boys home. And so that just added more to it. People read it in the paper. And you know how that is. I mean, when they run your obituary, yeah. then you're dead. You're dead. And then, you know, if they run it like when they say, oh, we made a mistake. It's this little thing at the, at the end of the wine. Yeah. The odd part about it is um, same thing happened to Mark Twain. But it happened to Mark Twain on my birthday, which is June 2nd, like 100 years before. Isn't that oh, wow. Just a point. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's nuts. Well, thanks a million. We sure appreciate you. Shelly Winters. Shelly Winters, that's right. Wasn't Shirley Jones. Not Shirley Jones. Shelly Winters. Thank you very much. I'm trying to unhook here. Thank you very much. It was so nice to meet you. Oh, gosh.